What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of Ben Bills with Joe. Taking a little break on the 12 Spoons of Christmas, and we're back on the lag three. We're going to be pushing forward today, guys, and getting some work done here and getting it ready for camo and paint and all that great stuff next episode. So first of all, took a look at the wing joints, and I did a lot of filing and sanding. Off camera, I sprayed them with a little bit of primer, and I noticed that, yeah, we have some issues here and there, so I have to go ahead and fix that. I also did a little bit of airbrushing here and there just to kind of test out some colors. I've got some silver here for the wheels, so that looks pretty neat. Also, the front area of the nose, there is a little bit of an issue I have to go ahead and fix right up there, but that's not really a problem. We're going to have to go ahead and do some seam corrections, so we're going to do that a little bit off camera because, well, you guys know the drill. A little bit of super glue, let that dry in the areas we need to, and then sand it down, ready to rock. Now, on the wing joints, one of the issues that I had was that I had dumped so much super glue on these different areas and sanded things down, I need to go ahead and rescribe some panel lines. So what I've done here is I've taken some Dymo tape, this is what I usually use for any sort of rescribing projects, and I've cut it into a nice arc. Now this is a very, very shallow arc, and what I've done here is I've traced it out to fit in with the right side of the wing where the wing meets the fuselage. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the backing off this Dymo tape, and I'm going to go ahead and lay it down there, and I'm going to then rescribe the connection point between the wing and the fuselage, because a lot of that is kind of uh, sealed up with super glue. I want to make sure that I can go ahead and put that back in there. So we're going to do that really quick. Shouldn't be that difficult to do. Like I said, I'm just going to stick it down and then take my pin vise. I'm going to get some sort of a needler all popped in there, and I'm just going to slowly scribe that out to restore any of that lost detail. So not too bad. Go ahead and get my pin vise here. And we're just going to go nice and slow here, starting about right about the middle there and just tracing it right on down to the trailing edge of the wing. I'll do that a few times just to go ahead and open up that trench right there. Then I'll sand it down. Once it's sanded, I'll clean out all that plastic gunk. And then I'll go ahead and drop a little bit of Tamiya extra thin right in there to kind of smooth out the edges. Now, I may want to go ahead and do a couple of passes at that point, but I don't want to take it too deep. I want to keep it fairly shallow, just enough to give the impression that there is a connection joint between wing and fuselage. Like I said, I don't want it to be blatantly in your face, just a little bit, just to give it that nice impression. So I'll pull off that Dymo tape. Let's go ahead and check it. Looks pretty decent. I could have probably gone back a little bit farther, but now I'll take some of sandpaper and I'll sand it all the way down, make sure that all of those edges are nicely smoothed out. Then I'll take some Tamiya Extra Thin and I'll just run it down there. We're going to have to do the exact same thing on the other side as well because that side is really, really filled. So we're going to have to go ahead and scribe a lot more of that. Now to go ahead and rescribe the left side of the wing root joint, we're going to use the exact same technique, but this time I'm going to use the exact same arc as I traced out from the right side. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use that same line and we're going to cut a new piece of Dymo tape to match that arc. Then I'll just stick it down, I'll scribe it out, sand it down, and then draw a little bit of the extra thin Tamiya right along that line. This is probably the easiest way to get about doing this. Now I'll take my knife, we'll pop this off here, we'll stick it down, rescribe, get that all set up. Went ahead and sanded all the joints down and now we're going to be using some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. I'm going to run it down right along the seam. All this does is smooth out the edges and kind of melt the plastic a little bit and make it not so pronounced. Kind of blend everything together. Again, I didn't go too deep on either one of these so that should be pretty decent. Get the other side as well, make sure everything is nice and tapered. Moving right along, everybody, we are going to have to go ahead and do some masking. We're going to have to mask off the canopies and make sure that we can get those installed. I can airbrush the areas, get the internal frame color set up, and then I can go ahead and start priming. And then finally, the next episode, we can lay down the camo. So first thing, we're going to take our sprue cuts, and I'm just going to go ahead and remove the front windscreen off of the sprue. Then we're going to have to come in, clean them up, and see what we can do. Now, the front windscreen is very, very delicate. The framework on that is so tiny. Let's go ahead and test it here on the lag and see how it looks. Surprisingly, it actually fits very, very nicely. If anything, I think that's probably one of the best fitting parts on this kit so far has been that front windscreen. That's a very good sign. So now let's go ahead and queue up a time lapse. Let's mask off all of these different clear parts, and then we'll be able to come back. We'll paint up the interior frame color, and then we're ready for priming. Let's do it.
All right, everybody. So now we are ready to go ahead and install the windscreen. I went ahead and off camera, took a little bit of black paint and painted the very front coping right underneath that windscreen. I painted that flat black. I'm not sure if it's 100% correct, but I don't really think I'm going to notice much. So I'm fine with the color. I also installed and painted the gun sight. That was a little tricky, but we got it in there and I think it looks pretty decent. Now we're going to glue down the front windscreen to make sure that that's not going to go anywhere. And I'm hoping that my masking worked out perfectly. If you notice on the masking for the front windscreen, I use a little bit of a different technique that I haven't really done much of because I don't trust my steadiness of my hands. And that is to actually put tape over the area and then cut out the frames using a very sharp X-Acto knife. I think we're good. We'll burnish it down before we paint and then we should be good to go. One thing we also need to do is go ahead and mask off that very tiny little window back here at the oil cooler. Want to make sure that that is masked off. Like I said, I don't know what this window does. I've never done any sort of research into it, so I'm not sure. But I know it's a clear part, and I know it's supposed to be a window, so we're just going to go ahead and mask it off and leave it there. This would be a really good place to use some liquid mask, but I don't know where I put mine, and I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to stick some tape on there. We'll be good to go. Now, if you noticed, I did put the center section onto the aircraft. It is not glued down, though. It is just kind of placed in there. It's enough of a fit there that it stays put. I'm not sure if I'm going to have this canopy open or canopy closed. I'm not sure I can actually justify keeping the canopy open because that center section does not want to fit back over the rear windows where it should actually sit. That's going to be some trouble. But regardless, we're going to go ahead and airbrush a silver color for the inside frames, get that all squared away. Then we'll be ready for priming and we'll hopefully have everything set for next episode where we'll actually get the camo pattern down on the lag. <music> I got to tell you, I love Steino Res Primer. It is just fantastic stuff. So we've overcoated the entire lag three in a beautiful coating of primer. That's really, really helpful because it tends to show you any errors that you've made. And I don't see many errors. So that's good. Now, if you recall, I did a lot of work on the wing roots. They're not exactly perfect, but I think they're going to be fine for what I need them to be. The front nose cone area right around the chin there on the intake. Also, I've got that nicely tapered in and I don't see any seams. So I'm happy with that. The extra gun port that we added in for Mitternov Series 11, that looks pretty decent too, and I'm happy with the installation. Now in the center section, we did add some extra plastic card to go ahead and taper in and change the contour of this area right in here for the oil cooler. I like how it looks. It's very smooth. You don't see any seams. Exactly what I was going for. So we're looking pretty decent. I'm excited to see how this thing takes some paint. But that's going to be next episode because right now I want to let this fully cure. We're going to move on, get back on the bench for more 12 Spruce of Christmas. I've got a lot more kits to build and not much time to do it in. So we'll get back on that. But until next Monday, guys, make sure to go check out Joe's channel. Check out his lag. I know his lag is moving right along. And we'll see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds with Joe. Until then, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. And we'll see you back here for episode number nine for our Lag 3 Series 11. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.